Okay. Okay, so all six trig functions for this, this angle, in the sine cosine tangent, is equal to tangent. Um, if you remember, Most common three, sine, sine, cosine, tangent. Opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. And then the reciprocals of all of those, which uh, are the other ones. So we can set up all of this. Sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. Last time, if you don't write a theta or you don't write something after the sign, it doesn't mean anything. You just write COS. It doesn't have any meaning. It's got to have the cosine of something, of theta, or of x, or of 37 degrees, something. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. It makes as much sense to write a square root without something inside of it. So keep that in mind. Uh, we have two of the sides. So can we? Give the values of any of these trig functions. Which side is this in relation to this angle? Opposite. And this one is? We can do ones that have opposite. Sine, okay? Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. 12 over 4 root 13. And then uh, 12 and 14 cancel. And then 3 over 1 13. How do we solve that problem? Having square root of 13 in the value? Mm -hmm. When you say sides? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then you it down. Okay, 3 root of 13 over 13. Well, we got the opposite and the hypotenuse side, right? And so there's one other one that we can write with opposite and the hypotenuse. Cosecant. Flip it over. I will not flip this one over. I'll go back to this one. Flip that one over. Because when you move over, then you have to do the numerator. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Okay, so now we don't have any, we don't have the third side. So we can't do any of the other ones until we know that other side. How do we find the third side given that we have two sides? A squared, let's call it A, B, C, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C is always the, new, the uh, hypotenuse. So 12 squared plus A squared equals 4 root 13 squared. Alright. Uh, 144 plus A squared plus 4 squared. 16. Plus 13. Root the square root of 13 squared. 13. So 16 times 13. Equals two hundred degrees. Two hundred eight. A squared subtract one hundred forty-four from both sides. And you get six hundred four. Six hundred four. Yes. So A is eight eight. This side is eight. That's A, so now let's go to the cosine. Right? What's the cosine here? Jason Jason over hypotenuse. over 4 root 13. This is going to 2 over root 13. And multiply by the root 13 over root 13. We have 2 root 13. Root 13. The secant is? Reciprocal of the cosine, or the hypotenuse.
sinus over the adjacent. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, 12 over 8. Told the angle what this angle is, and we're and this side, the hypotenuse, is say solve the solve means find all the angles and sides. So well, we know the time can add up to 180, Good. so 90, and then uh, plus 37. 90 plus 37 plus this should be 180. Yeah. So so subtract these from 180. 73. You get 73. 73. How is that even possible? 90. 53? Yeah. There you go. That makes sense. This one's 90. This one's always 90 in the right triangles. And so these other two need to add up to 90. You can subtract that one to 90. Why do all triangles add up to 90? Because they add up to 90. Yeah. Because they add up to 90. Why do all triangles add up to 90? Because they do. 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 I take 22 and I multiply it by the sine of 37. I get negative 14.157. Does that sound like? No, it's not. It's negative 14. So, so Daniel says switch two degrees. What does that mean? Just switch two degrees. That's why I shrunk it down. I, I put it in radians so I can make a point of, of pointing out. Careful, your calculator doesn't know what 37 means. There's no degrees symbol, right? They didn't put degrees there. Yeah, so the way it knows what it's in, degrees or radians, is you tell it beforehand what it's in. Mode. So in mode, go to degrees. Now it knows what 37 means 37 degrees, but it's 37 radians. What does float mean? It means that it will decide how many decimal places it's going to tell it. That makes it. 13.24. Now, if you took four, negative 14, whatever, and you just made it positive, like, it's kind of close. It's kind of an unfortunate uh, coincidence. Kind of close. There is no degrees. In mode? It's not such a range. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I got it. You want to press enter? Okay, so A is about 13.24. And if I this other side, we could do that Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. Not a very good idea. Why do you think it's not a very good idea? 
You can do the cosine, you know, if you use the cosine of 37, it's going to be exactly like. But if I use the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to use 13.24, which is already an approximation. And that's going to affect my calculation for B, and it's going to, well, it's going to be at least a little time. off. It's not a lot, but. Yeah, it'll mess everything. So if you want to use the Pythagorean theorem, here, either, well, do this. Make sure you use a lot more decimal places than just two if you're going to do the Pythagorean theorem. Otherwise, once you can start doing that, it starts to get harder than just doing this. But in the cosine of 37 degrees, or the sine of what? 53 degrees. Cosine of 37 is sine of 53. They're the same thing. Okay, well, B over O, adjacent over hypotenuse, so B over 22. Multiply by 22. 22 times the cosine of uh, 37. 37 is, or the cosine of 53 or whatever, and we use a calculator to find out that approximation. So if we were really desperate and we didn't have a calculator, mm -hmm. we could like make our own triangle like and like choose values for A and B and then like do math and value to C. You draw a really good triangle that the angle was right, as accurate as possible, and then you measured the sides. Or like you two and four and have that or anything that will be right. Well, you choose both of those. You, if you're lucky, you pick both of those values right. You should only pick one value of the side. No, I mean like if you really had like no sign of something, mm -hmm. you would have to have like what the like opposite lengths, of Yeah, what the lengths of the yeah. sides were. Yeah. So you could use Pythagorean theorem, you might just pick random lengths for A and B, yeah. Pythagorean theorem with C, uh, and arrange it so they don't go into decimals to get an approximation. Yeah. And then you could manually figure out sign and then plug it into a different problem. Yeah, but then if you pick two random lengths, then you have no control over what angles you're making in that triangle. So you wouldn't know if it was 37 or so how did they come up with the original, um, like how did they come up with this is what sine is, this is what cosine is, but plug it into the calculator so you can plug it. Good question. Yeah. You don't know what your calculator is doing. It's just a magic box. The arc length of a sector. This is a sector, piece of pizza, right. a section of a circle. From here, if you were to walk in a curve and then like, count the number of feet that it takes you to walk along the curve, it's really hard to measure because it's not straight. Right. Something you could do. Take one of those wheels. You ever seen those wheels that measure length? You could take a wheel and run it along. That's pretty, pretty good. Or if you have that piece of rope. Piece of piece rope. rope. Yeah, put a piece of rope all along that curve, and then take that rope and straighten it out and measure it. Uh, yeah. So is pi the circumference at like a ratio of the circumference to the radius? 
So if you take a circle circumference and divide it by a standard, you can get to the length of the circumference. But in order to do that, you have to know the circle's circumference and its diameter before you start. Let's get out of here. Okay. Oh, actually, let me have your pink slips. I've already marked out who has their homework. Do a pink slip, pass that in. Um, for, so. okay. You need the uh, six trigonometric functions for this angle, the sine, cosine, tangents, and cosine, and tangent. You need to write those down, get ready for that. Remember, you've got to write something after the cosine or after the tangent. You've got to be taking the sine and the cosine and the tangent out of something. Uh, let's just do what we can do with those two sides. What can we do with those two sides? Sign, theta, sign. That was the same as what we had in the moment, right? 3 over 9 five. over 15. Simplify that to 3 over 5. Or 6 over 10. Then you're using base and net. Okay, so then what else do we know if we know what the sine is? So the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. Right. On the cosine, we need to have all three sides. Find all three sides we need to use. So you're do Yeah, a squared plus b squared is c squared. A squared plus b squared is c a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if that goes into decimals, then it's probably an approximation in there for kind of give you some part of the answer. Yeah, so I would, I would answer, you know, the length of that side is, is that much. Uh, but I wouldn't use it to calculate anything else if I could avoid it. 225 minus 81, I think you have to be 64. So it's only okay to be wrong uh, if you're wrong. Uh, wrong. Uh, this. One is wrong more. One forty-four. Working off a memory, that was a bad idea. A fifty-four. Okay. So I let the close answer. So uh, one. Close answer. What was the close answer? Three. Okay. So we're off. Twelve over nine. Four over three. No, sir. Good. Um, so F is giving you H and D. The angle D is giving you 40 degrees. And how big is E? 50 degrees. You've got to add up to 180 for all the way. If you only have a 90 degree angle, like that's the only thing you know the, the, the yeah. of, is that the right word for the yeah. Sure. Could you figure out the other two in that program? Depends on the other information that you have. You could have two side lengths. Yeah. And we will. But not in this section. What if the only thing you knew was that one angle is 90 degrees? That's impossible. All you know is that this angle is 90. This side could be anything, this side could be anything, this side could be anything. And imagine that just flexing and changing and those sort of angles, other angles could be anything as well. Maybe well, maybe not quite. Okay, so let's say we want to figure out what E is. And I'm going to use the cosine. 
cosine of what would involve e? What? The cosine of d, cosine of 40 degrees, would be adjacent e over orthotenuse. Oh. Why do we have to use cosine? Because they said so. I'm just challenging you to think outside the box a little bit. Multiply by 8, multiply by 8. You don't have to, I mean, it's, it's possible in other ways. But that's the way I chose to make them do it. So E will be approximately 8 times cosine of 40. Making sure my calculator is in degrees. Which it is. 8 times cosine of 40. 6.1. Again, I wouldn't use that to calculate another side because you can't square this and this is just an approximation to be more exact. But the sine of 40 is equal to d over 8. 8 times the sine of 40 would be like d. We know 16 degrees. Okay, that's a given. Uh, we know that this is 21, 21 feet. And uh, we know that the thing, we don't care about how long that imaginary line is, for instance, right? We care about how tall that guy is. So what could involve 16 degrees, this angle right here, this side that's right next to it, and this side? The tangent, the tangent of 16 degrees is equal to which is uh, whatever column he is. Okay. Multiply by 21 on both sides. 21 times the tangent of 16. Drawing the angle. So that's it. Fairly simple idea. Drawing the angle of 5, four, five pi over 2. Okay. How do you make sense of that? Multiply. Okay, so convert it to, to degrees. Alright. If we just have to convert it to degrees in order to graph it, why do we have radians? That's the point. My point here is that I'm going to force us not to do that. If that's what you did, and you, you drew the angle based on what your knowledge of degrees, and then label it 5 pi over 4, it's not going to know the difference, right? But it is going to be useful for us to be fluent in radians. And think, if I had taught you, or if you had been taught radians since you were a kid, that's what you would know. And then when I told you about degrees, which was this new thing, you'd want, you'd have this inner desire to turn it back into radians. It is something that you can learn. It is something you can understand. Which you can learn. Uh, uh, it depends on the circumstances. If it's like. Okay, graphing something, which you can learn. Graphing something, radio. Why? I'll explain later. Okay. Uh, so, 
to help us out, let's remember at least two things right off the bat. That this is how much, how many radians is this? Uh, very good. High radians. Oh, and if we went all the way around, this would be two. <coughs> the pi so radians. The pi is, is helpful because then we can think of it fractions of pi, right? Let's think in fourths of a pi. And how many fourths do we have? Five fourths. I thought radiation was me measured in radians. Uh, You can write 5 pi over 4 like this, 5 fourths pi. That's exactly what it is, 5 fourths of pi. Okay. So you cut pi into 4 pieces, and you count 5 of those fourths, and that's just pi pi over 4, right? How far is pi over 4? We got 1 pi, one pi, and then we got a little bit more. And a little bit more. 5 quarters pi. So how far would this be in, in fourths? I know there are be 1 pi, uh, 4 be four, four, four fourths. Very good. And, and so you need one more fourth? Yeah. Well, how big is that though? Is it, is it um, no, it's exactly five. halfway between the x and the y axis. Yeah, halfway between the yeah, like that. Yeah, since you're taking it by fours, and then I go on uh, the uh, x axis, I mean, uh -huh. y, uh, yeah, y axis is going to be halfway, which is going to be two. Halfway. So it's kind of around, yeah, half of that at 45 degrees is right. going to be a quarter. All right. You fell for the going back to degrees, but also but said lots of other well, degrees. Are just degrees are radians. But again, if I told you about radians only, you never heard of degrees before. I know. Well, the degrees would be like that. <laughs> that degrees the degrees, degrees are degrees. usually like, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, no, it's okay. if, you, if, if it says drop uh, the angle by by over 4, then you do that. Convert from degrees to radians and vice versa. And you convert between two units the, the same. Right? Whatever the units are, the idea is the same. If you want to convert from um, feet, like 16,000 feet, to miles, yards, yards. You no, know, the bigger of a number. Miles. Better. Let's do miles. Right? So when you convert this to miles, how are we going to do that? Well, we got first. Uh, whatever feet over miles, yeah. Or sorry, not not feet oh, over miles. We miles want miles. miles over feet. Yeah. So that the feet cancel. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Five thousand two hundred and eighty feet. Yeah, I was always trying to figure it out. Like, is it five thousand two hundred and eighty something? Well it definitely ends at a zero. I was trying to think of that scene from Remember the Titans. Yeah, where he says, you got 5,280 feet and you got to run every single one of them just drop the ball. Yeah. Get, get the ball. Yeah, that's how I always remember it. Yeah. So the, the units will cancel each other out. The numerator will cancel the denominator. And we just want to get those units to cancel each other out. So if we want to convert from degrees to radians, we're going to multiply by something that's going to cancel out the degrees. Okay. And the thing about this, like, if I divide one mile by 5,280 feet, that's two things that are equivalent. That fraction is equal to one, the number one. Because these two things are equivalent. I could replace this with one mile, one mile divided by one mile is one. 5,280 feet divided by 5,280 feet is one. So we're really multiplying this by one. You're taking 16,000 this time divided by 5,280. Yeah. That's so three, three point three something. Not much more than three. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come over here, and how many degrees are equivalent to how many radians? One radian. One radian. Not one radian. I, I think. I think it was this class that we talked about that. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, to get out of that mindset where you think, oh, this is one, but it's not one, it's 3.14 radian. Yeah. And one radian would be somewhere along, that's, that's <laughs> one. one radian would be somewhere in here. One, it would be approximately one third. Three radians would be right around there. What's that? It would be approximately one third of half a circle. No. 
close to that, yeah. One radian. So we can do 180 and pi. 360 and 2 pi. 45 and pi over 4. And of course, this is the center. So the degrees are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with radian. Negative 135 pi over 180. These share at least a 5. 45? Oh, yeah. So, 3, 5, or 4. Is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get a new point 3, 5, 6, 1, 9, 4, 4, Yeah, and uh, 45, 45, 45, 45. What? 3, and 4, 5, and 5. Negative pi over 18. Now we're more trying to do that one. Than it's in what? radians, right? I'm writing this kind of ghostly. <laughs> I can make it more ghostly. Than that. Um, writing it like that because it's just understood that it's in radians when the problem says so. Whoa, it's right. not really written there, but it's understood radians is what we're in. Not because there's pi there. But because we're told that we're in radians. Or the absence of the degree symbol tells us we're in radians. Okay. The pi symbol is not the radians symbol. It's not the symbol that means it's in radians. Who so discovered pi? Uh, pi? Pi McMurray. I think I said Copernicus last time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so negative pi over 18 times. Well, now we want to cancel out those radians, right? Mm -hmm. From the denominator of this thing, we want radians. Uh, so we can cancel out those radians. Hmm. You want to make that one up? Okay. No. No need. We've got the radians down here canceling with these radians. And we've got the threes up here at 180 degrees of high radians. 3.14. Pi plus pi. Pi, 3.14 cancels 3.14. So we got that, let's maybe make it a little bit. Uh, okay, so we got the radians and the pi and the radians. Okay. Okay. Let's do that one. Yeah, let's do that one. 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 Let's do Yes. Uh, so negative pi over 18, that's, that's, yeah, that's also going to be quite small. If this is pi, if this is negative pi, then 18th, an 18th of that would be pretty small. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a way to think, how have I done my math correct? Is it negative 10 degrees? Did I cancel the right thing out the way I was supposed to? Seems like it. I got negative 10 and, and negative pi over 18. They're, they're both small in the negative direction. I didn't get like negative pi over 18 and negative so just always think about how reasonable your answer is. Any questions from all this? Yes, sir. So I'm going to give you your unit circles. You are being inducted into the unit a circle of people, thing. people who have unit circles. Okay. There are people in my calculus class who still have their unit circles from the day that I passed them out now. Okay. They are quite That's useful. So fill them out neatly oh and uh, get there. I want to give you a piece of advice because I know what else I want to have you put on here. I don't want to get too cluttered. 
put your angles inside the circle, and we're going to put some stuff outside the circle. If you put it outside the circle, that's fine. And it's just all the outside of the circle is going to get quite cluttered. Okay? So to avoid the clutter, maybe draw the angles on the lines themselves. Just to be clear, this is zero degrees. Right there in the middle would be 45. And here is 60. There's 30. So of course there's 90. This would be 45 past 90. by 2 pi over 3 is a mark up on the 2 pi over 3. Oh, not 2 pi over 3. The pi over 3. 3 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, which simplifies the pi. All right. We're going to another pi over 3. Remember, that's as big as 60 degrees. 4 pi over 3. So the radius is also pi. No. The radius is undetermined right now at this moment. Will it ever be determined? We will determine it very soon. All right, how about uh, 30 degrees is a sixth of the way to pi? Sixth of the way to half the rotation. Well, this is 30 degrees as well. Right? So that's, a, that's a sixth. This is 6 pi over 6, right? Mm -hmm. So if we go back, let's see, it's 5 pi over 6. Add them up. Let's look at it this way. If we go to pi over 6 and we go to another pi over 6, another sixth of the way, it'll be a third of the way. Right? Two sixths. So you can do 6 and 4 together. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, especially the 6, will cancel and simplify down. So, pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6 simplifies to pi over 2. 4 pi over 6 simplifies to 2 pi over 3. 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 3. What about 35? Can that be uh, Well, uh, that's not, like, if you move by 6, you're not going to get to 135. Oh, okay. A 6 right, is, is the same as 30. So, I'm going to give you from 30 to 60, 90. 
And then you wouldn't hit 135, you'd go 120, 150, plus 30 more would be 100, 150. Oh, okay. Six, five, or six, seven, five, or six. Six, five, or six, seven, five, or six. So that would be eight, five, or six, and that would be six, five, four, five, or two. It's already there. Uh, eight, five, or six. No, eight, five, or six, nine, five, or six. Eight, nine, five, or six. Can simplify. Mm -hmm. Which means we can go pi over two, another a second pi over two, two pi over two, and a third one, three pi over two. All right, so we're nine pi over six, ten pi over six. All right, there. Simplify to pi over two. Eleven pi over six. So we could figure these all out by hand on the fly. That would yeah. be hard. That would be hard, but it might take longer than longer. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times I just I just figure them back out in my head as I need to think about them. You can radii in your head. Yeah. yeah. So pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four. Uh four pi over four, five pi over four. Six pi over four, that's so three pi over two. Uh, seven pi over four. And eight pi over four, six pi over three pi. So there's the radians. At least of the radians that we use on a radio basis. Counting them off like that, does that help you understand them a little better? What is the act of calculating the radians? Like, is the act of it? Yeah. Like, like fishing, trying to catch fish and fishing, trying to write, when you're writing, you're, to write is writing, but it's to radii. But are you doing I don't know. <laughs> You want the, the word, the verb form? Yes. Of the radians. Two radians. I don't know, man. Like, the act of throwing something out the window is... This illustration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The act of killing someone is murder. The murder. All right, so here's what we're going to do. What we're going to write here are the coordinates of these points. I'm going to help you write them, and then I'm going to help you see why they are what they are and why it's helpful to have them. Can we slide the circle around to wherever the coordinates we wanted? What? Can we just slide the circle around to wherever the coordinates we wanted? It's how the coordinates are important, so much as the distance between the coordinates. Well, the coordinates are pretty important. But I think maybe Gordon is uh, alluding to the, the fact that we don't know what the radius was. Is that what you're saying? No, I was just saying for the Sure, that's what you're saying. So that was we don't know what the radius is that. yet. We can change the coordinates themselves to the distance between them. Yeah, there's something constant about that. But also, we're going to choose the radius to be 1. 1's a nice number. Yeah. Okay. So the radius of this circle is 1. That's why it's called the unit circle. Oh. One unit. Mm -hmm. Oh, are we going to have to use trigonometry to figure out the distances? Mm -hmm. We'll use trigonometry to verify the coordinates of these points. Could we use trigonometry to find the perfect? Absolutely. Yes. This involves to get you started, just draw a straight line down a 90 degree angle. Mm -hmm. What do you have here? A right triangle. A right triangle with an angle here of 30, of course. We are given that the radius is 1. So all of these distances from the center out to the side 
are all one. Okay. All one. Yeah. Given that, so when we oh, the oh. coordinates from this is the x and the y axis. So if we use no. zero as the origin, yes, zero, the origin is right here. Because we could just make any number the origin of these coordinates are in the matter. So zero zero is, is where the center of the circle is, yes. Then f for zero degrees uh, for two pi, the coordinates would be one zero. Good. That's done. And then 180 degrees would be negative. Good. Yeah. For 30 degrees, if you remember our, our discussion the other day about sine, cosine, and tangent, they're 30 degrees, 45, and 60. We might not be surprised to find out this is the square root of 3 over 2, and this is 1 half. This point is at square root of 2, square, or sorry, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Wait, can you, can you not get them to us and we, we do the math? No. I could, but yeah. we're running low on time. But that would be so much fun. Can that be our homework? No. No. Uh, no, thank you. I'm really sorry, Gordon. You're trapped. No, I am not. <laughs> I am a free spirit. Alright, so this point is at root 3 over 2, 1 half. Okay. Here is the cut to the, the chase short version of the story here. The x coordinate is the cosine of 30, and the y coordinate is the sine of 30. No big surprise here because if you look at this triangle that I drew, wait, like is it square root of 2, square root of 2? No, square root of 2 is. No, no the next one. What? 45 this one? No, 45 degree one. What about it? It's the square root of 2, square root of 2. Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So it's the same. They're the same. So if you set up this triangle and you try to solve for this side, remember we know this side is how big? One. So the sine, say the sine of 30 equals this guy right here. Well, look, since we're on the xy plane, call it the vertical, call it y. y over 1. Over 1. That's why we chose 1. Because it's y divided by 1. That's anything divided by 1. Makes sense. Oh, so it's just y. So the sine <coughs> of 30 is y. So the y value is the sine and the x value is the cosine. Now, how about this point over here? What are its coordinates? Given yeah. that it's 30 degrees above the horizontal, so it's 30 degrees. And it's over here. Maybe the second quadrant. Maybe maybe the same place, just over here in the second quadrant. The, the horizontal is exactly the opposite. The vertical is actually identical. They're both vertical, just as high as each other. How about this one? So here the, the uh, x is negative and the y is still positive. Fill in the rest of the coordinates down at the bottom of the quadrant. Well, yeah, that's what it is. That's where this circle is. 
is a mirror image of this point here, so it should also be at negative root 3 over 2 in the x direction and negative 1 half in the y direction. This is now below the x-axis. This is the x-axis, just reminding you. This should be at negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 3 over 2. That's where the circle is drawn. Right? This circle is drawn on the x and y axis. Uh, like you could draw the point one one is right here. It's completely useless to us. But yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly right. Where's this point? And this one should be one half. If you're paying attention and you look at the top left, that's my page. You can tell me now what the uh, the cosine of 330 degrees is. Or if you look at yours, it might be more filled out and it would be cosine of 330 degrees. 11 pi over 6. That's how many radians it is. Square root 3 over 2. Square root 3 over 2. I stated earlier, earlier I said that the x is the cosine, the y is the sine. So it's important that the cosine is like that. What's the, what's the sine? What's the sine of 4 pi over 3? Negative uh, root 
factor over two. You go to four pi over three, there, there it is right there. And the y value is the sign. So, Co-terminal with an angle that you have. Ah. What's that? Which one's that? Which one's that? Sine. You're right, it is a sign. Negative point five. <laughs> the cosine is negative one half. I was asking for the cosine. The cosine. <laughs> <laughs> the cosine is always the first one in the. Uh, that's the only thing that goes wrong. Right, so listen for just a sec here. Uh, the the sine of the cosine of the angle that you have is negative one half. The thing here, the thing that I tried to say before with the triangles was, it's not just that the uh, the sine of this angle is the opposite of what hypotenuse. Okay, it's really a measure of like how far away is this point from this point. And it's, it's not enough to just say, oh, it's one away. No matter what that angle is, it would be one away. Does that make sense? Like, all of these points are one away from the middle here. <laughs> but the sine and the cosine, all those guys, they are a measure of things like, how far above this point is this point? Versus, or divided by, or over, how far is it straight from this point to that point? So the vertical versus just the point A to point B distance. When we take that and divide those two, we call it the sine. Okay. So even angles that don't fit inside of triangles have a vertical versus straight A to B distance, and that's what we call the sine. Vertical distance is the sine? Vertical distance divided by the distance straight from one point to the other, that's what the sine is. The cosine is what's the horizontal distance over the A and B distance. Right triangles are easy way to think of that. Like how, how big is the side? How big is the side? Mm -hmm. It's harder to talk about how far is this distance and how far is this distance right off the bat. And you basically have to create right triangles anyway to say the Yes, you can create right triangles to find all of these values. Right? And the sines and cosines and tangents and, and all those are ones that we filled out those charts in our notes last time. So everything geometry related eventually goes back to a right triangle. I don't know. It, it sounds good, but and, and, and romantic and all, but I'm not sure. It's, it's like how it. all of algebra comes back to addition. Or yeah, anyway. Yeah. And all of the pens come back to right order. Yeah, but not all of them are gonna be right angles. <laughs> All right, so just make sure that you have your unit circles filled out for next time. That's going to be it. That's actually very nice. Yes, that's nice. Just make sure you're ready. This fell out. 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 This fell